We're going to be talking about your jump to AEW and how that whole transition happened, but we hope that you'll jump out to Las Vegas and see JR live. He's going to be calling the pay-per-view for double or nothing. And this to me is the big AEW show. And I know that people would argue that it's all in, but respectfully, we've only had one of those technically for AEW and that was at Wembley, but this is really what started it all. This is like the five year anniversary of AEW because their first big show was double or nothing. 2019 JR was on the call for that. He's going to be on the call for this. You don't want to miss it. Las Vegas is always such a fun town and it has a big fight feel because of all the famous boxing matches and famous MMA moments that have existed there. It's sort of once upon a time, the, the second home for AEW besides Chicago and Jacksonville, and they return on Sunday, May 26. It's going to be everywhere you enjoy pay-per-view, but go see it live. AEW always delivers on pay-per-view and this won't be any different. We've got Swerve Strickland defending the AEW title against Christian Cage. We've got Tony Storm def- uh, defending her AEW women's title against Serena Deeb. Willow Nightingale will be defending her TBS title against Mercedes Monet, who's making her AEW in-ring debut. And Roderick Strong will be defending the international title against Will Ospreay. Man, this is going to be a barn burner. There's going to be a lot of great matches, a lot of great wrestling on this show, Jim. Yeah, a lot of great wrestling. That's your, your, you hit the nail right on the head, Connie. Uh, everybody's competitive. The match, the the matches that they are in, they want to steal the show. They want to leave a lasting memory of a, of a, of a wrestling match, uh, well done. And, uh, so it it should be cool. I just, I hope that, uh, fans will tickets are still available by the way, uh, for that event. And, uh, if if you can, if you can afford it and are so uh, like mine as Conrad and I go, go in person, Conrad's right. Uh, for whatever reason, the, uh, the talent on AEW, well, I don't know exactly how it happens, but they seemingly always outdo themselves on pay-per-view. Uh, you get these matches that are highly rated and highly thought of. It's a pretty cool deal. So in any event, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm also looking forward to my youngest granddaughter's high school graduation. I'll be in Oklahoma for that. No appearances, just seeing, been a proud grandpa and, uh, those kids do well. My, both my granddaughters are, are going to be successful. Uh, they're afraid not to be. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, but I, I love those girls and I'm going to, I'm going to be there supporting them. So all good, buddy. All good. But you, you were talking, you were talking about me transitioning to AEW. Let's get started on that because it's an interesting topic to say the very least. Jim, let's sort of start at the beginning. You know, um, the, the whole story of AEW really probably started, believe it or not, with a tweet from Dave Meltzer in May of 2017, where he's basically making a comment that an American professional wrestling promotion called ring of honor could not sell 10,000 tickets for a wrestling event. Because that was a feat that no U.S. based wrestling promotion besides the dominant WWE had done since WCW did way back in 1999. Now that felt like a safe bet because at that point you're talking about 18 years since anyone has done it. Of course, as we recall, Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega promoted and created All In, which launched in September of 2018. It did feature a lot of wrestlers from ring of honor, but really promotions from all over. And the event sold out in like under a half hour. It had the largest attendance for a professional wrestling show in the United States that was organized by promoters who weren't affiliated with the WWE or WCW since 1993. In total, there were 11,263 tickets sold. I guess that's total utilization is the term they would use. Were you surprised by this, that the guys could pull this together and really seemingly it all was born out of a almost off the cuff comment from Dave Meltzer? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was happy for them. Uh, happy for AEW that they sold a a ring of honor. However, way you want to, uh, address that, but, uh, it was a pleasant surprise. 
I thought it would do well. I always thought that there was a room for an alternative brand to tour and uh, sell tickets. It was all a matter of getting the right talents in place. And uh, Tony Khan did a great job of signing some very marketable uh, young wrestlers. And I, I uh, was very happy about that. Conrad, did I see you at that event? Yeah, we were there. You actually sat in uh, one of my suites at that show. Oh, one of my suites. I have well, we, we did StarCast, so we had a bunch of events, you know. So there was this contingent was watching with the legend, and this was for the media, and that was for family of Cody and blah, blah, blah. So we had a little string there where we worked with the building. And uh, I don't remember, were you in the Sean Waltman one or the Dave Meltzer one? I don't remember that. Yeah. So you're talking about a suite? Yeah. Yeah. There were a few in a row that were that touched there. And I knew like Dave was in one and Waltman was in another and Raven was in another. And I just wasn't sure who all was in there with you. And, and that must, must be, must be easy to get a suite. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> when I promoted the, um, Starcast event with them, we did ticket packages. So I had a direct line to the building. So we marked, you know, some of that as a, a VIP experience and you got to watch wrestling with Sean Waltman or what have you. But as I recall, you weren't there at the start of the show. I think your flight no. landed during the show and then you it, came right yeah. to the building. That's correct. Uh, that's yeah. correct. And I watched it with you. Yeah. Uh, and your, and your suite, uh, cause you had food. Oh yeah. I made sure I had food and I knew what you drank. We had that too. <laughs> I'm trying to be a good host over here. Yeah, uh, you are, you are, yeah. you pay attention. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was good. I, I, but I'm happy that they did well. It launched us. Uh, it gave us all, uh, some peace of mind that, Hey, look, we, I think we may be onto something because these 11,000 tickets sold, uh, were, uh, just, it, it just gave everybody pause that, Hey, look, I think we can do this. So I was excited to be there for that. It was just, it's just fun to be in a full building hear the crowd, ch crowd chants and all that uh, wonderful emotions. This, it was just great. So that was a fun deal, but I, it's funny what you remember. I remember drinking a lot of crown Royal. Hell yeah. That's Hell good. yeah. Hey, chat me up. Oh, it's been said a lot. Do you think in your opinion, all in was like the proof of concept for Tony Cohen? Just your opinion. I think so. Yeah. You sold all the tickets. Yeah. And it, it wasn't because of ring of honor. It wasn't because of anything else going on. I don't, I don't think maybe I'm overlooking something, but yeah, I think it, it I think it like Tony was like me. It let me exhale in a very positive way. I thought it was very good. And, uh, I'm happy that we had the success that we did.